Okay, here we are in part six. We're gonna look at the ECU outputs now. So additional outputs, very similar to the inputs, are configured using the functions section under the main setup. So depending on what your engine does, you may have a bunch of different outputs you want to have. So pretty much every engine is gonna need some sort of fuel pump uh, control. And this is gonna switch a relay. Um, and in this case we actually had two fuel pumps because we had a in-tank pump and we also had a pump that goes from the swirl pot to uh, the fuel rail. So you have a first stage pump put it with a loop of fuel coming up from the in-tank pump from the tank through the swirl pot and then the swirl pot had a second pump that went into the um, fuel rail and then the fuel return line back to the swirl pot and an overflow back into the main tank. So you can see under here for example you can have multiple um, fuel pump controls this is the normal fuel pump relay output while it's standard on all Haltex on DPO5, but you can also assign additional pumps onto here. Um, so you can either have a switch on and off pump or you can have a duty cycle pump where you will pulse the pump on and off. Now, the duty cycle pumps aren't going to work on high amperage because the Haltex outputs aren't high amperage with a relay. You know, um, This would need some sort of solid state control to do this probably. The switched ones would trigger a relay, so it's very much an on off. Um, so the prime time is when you first turn the ignition on, the fuel pump will pump along to make sure the fuel rail has got some uh, initial fuel in it to start the engine. And then of course you can have trigger settings for when the secondary fuel pump turns on. This pumps on all the time because we are literally using it as a lift from the swell pot to the fuel rail. So that's a typical switched output. Now there's no only other thing to note on switched outputs is active states, whether it's low or high. Now. The way a relay is triggered is there's a 12 volt feed from the engine's um, engine control fuse or engine control relay, which gives it the primary power to the ECU and so on. This relay is powered by 12 volts all the time, and then the ECU pulls the other pin to ground to complete the circuit to switch the relay on. So this is an active state low. So it pulls the, the pin that connects it to the ECU, which connects the relay low, to turn the relay on to then put the high current through to the fuel pump. If you had your relay wired to ground and used to provide power to the relay to turn it on, you would do active state high. One little trick, if you need to turn your fuel pump on to test it at any point, you can literally just switch this over, hit apply with the ignition on and the, and the engine not running and you can just turn the fuel pump on. Um, so additional outputs you might look at doing is things like uh, a boost controller. So a boost control solenoid is a pulsed output, or PWM, pulse with modulation. And you may have one or two solenoids, depending on what you're doing. You may have some sort of arm switch or you know something like that. But uh, this, again, very similar, have an uh, active state. It'll also have um, a DPO pin that you need to wire to it. And typically you have a 5-volt feed or 12-volt feed, or whatever your solenoid requires, probably 12 volts, into your solenoid and then the active state will be set as whether you're pulling that down to ground or whether you've got a ground and you're pushing voltage through the solenoid. Um, you also need to look at the output frequency of your solenoid, things like whether it's a 25 hertz uh, signal or a 33 hertz signal, and also you might want to consider a maximum duty cycle to prevent you from uh, saturating that solenoid 100%, which could cause basically the circuit to be permanently energised and in a coil of wire, that makes the wire get hot. So those are the typical outputs we're looking at there. Um, so here we've got some outputs. We've created an oil pressure light output using a generic output. Similar sort of thing. It's just a DPO with an active state of low, and that just turns the light on the dashboard on. The taco, the normal tachometer um, option here in Haltech, we found on this particular car that instead of using the default tachometer output, which is in here somewhere, uh, tachometer. We couldn't get the needle to point at the right RPM all the way around, and so what we actually did was use a generic output too. It's a frequency output, but we used a table. And because of that table here, in the generic outputs, where are we? Generic output taco, we were able to change the, um, the frequency based on the RPM signal to make sure that the RPM on the dashboard was exactly what the EC was seeing, otherwise it pointed the wrong thing. Um, other sort of outputs on here, what we've got. So you might have a thermo fan switch. So the earlier RBs all had the um, viscous fan. This one's an electric fan on this, this car. And so we've got two fans here that are switched. 
and you can see same sort of thing again active site um, state is low because it's a 12 volt feed and the relay is triggered by putting it to ground and you can set various things like uh, what temperature to turn on and off whether to do it with the uh, vehicles moving or not and so on uh, so you can do various uh, outputs like that there's one more on this car where is it oh yeah check engine lights this is quite an old car again still so the check engine light is a physical wire to the ECU um, some more modern cars you may actually have to look at outputs from your canvas now you can look at what's known as a vehicle can and how to um, it hasn't got a massive selection but there are a few common cars that they support here and this sends out all the required messaging from the ECU to output to the dashboard or the ABS or whatever is supported for that vehicle to um, allow things like the check engine light to work, the tachometer to work and so on. Okay, I think that's it. Well, thanks for watching.